Hello my friends, this is Alex, and I welcome you to Socialism Survival Podcast number 3. This week my subject is Surviving Socialistic Propaganda. Before I will get to the subject, I'd like to invite you to my website, socialismsurvival.com. Please visit the site, join the forum, read the blogs, and just spread the word. Also, please join me on Twitter. My ID is AlexSSP, with one word, AlexSSP. And on Facebook, Socialism Survivalist. Now, back to the subject. The very fact that you listen to me now means that for at least next 30 minutes, or whatever will be the length of this podcast, you left behind or disconnected from your usual media sources, such as TV, radio, newspapers, magazines, and maybe even internet, unless you are streaming now from my website. Survivability of your mind and your will is this message's ultimate goal. The substance of this message will help you to, first, cleanse your mind, second, develop immunity against all forms of propaganda, and third, damage and destroy propaganda machine with effective counter-propaganda. First of all, you need to realize that there is endless battle over and for your mind. In capitalist society, both left and right target you with their propaganda, using millions of dollars that people like you donated. In other words, you pay for your own indoctrination. In socialism, there is only left is left, that claims to be right, while it's wrong, and they simply deduct propaganda money from your pay. In order for the left to become right, all the right must be exterminated and their property confiscated. Don't worry, that's all for your good. They just eliminated your hardship of choice making. Let's analyze the past of Soviet Communist Party propaganda machine their tricks and stunts. Those of us who survived it will be helpful in laying foundation for future survivors. Let's look at some elements of Soviet regime that defined its character and image for many decades. Some of you, my listeners, especially those of you in your 40th or older, should remember this term, Iron Curtain, in regards to the Soviet oppressive regime that surrounded its citizens with the fence or wall of isolation that no one could easily penetrate, both from inside or outside. I mean that it was still possible to break through and there are still were rare occasions when someone tried and succeeded, or at least survived. No, we didn't bang our heads into iron wall. And I'm not talking only about the border. It was just the most visible part of the Iron Curtain that was copied by other socialist countries like China, or East Germany with its famous Berlin Wall. I think Americans too could learn something about the border protection from Soviets, only applying it to countries' defense, not self-isolation. Truly, the Iron Curtain was mostly invisible, built into minds and lives of Soviet people by propaganda monster. 
after Lenin's revolution, older generation with all their old culture and aristocracy was mercilessly exterminated by Bolsheviks. At the same time, their children were taught to hate their parents and grandparents as oppressors and exploiters. Anyone should know that human mind is most vulnerable in childhood. Communists knew that and they directed all their propaganda means to create a new human breed called Soviet people. Our history has many impressive stories of brain damaging results communists achieved while building a new bright utopian future with new people called Soviet people. I won't take your time to tell all of them, but let me share one, probably most widely known, as it was the part of school curriculum through the years of Soviet Union's existence. It is the story of Pavlik Morozov, young boy whose childhood coincided with the dark period of Stalin's rule. To damage successfully children's minds, Soviets established three communist youth groups fully integrated into educational system. Oktobrata, or I would call it in English Oktoberniks, were children approximately seven to nine years of age. Next, pioneers were about 10 to 14 years of age and Komsomol was for 15 and older, until somebody was accepted in Communist Party. Pioneers were something like Boy Scouts, only with strong communist agenda. And membership wasn't voluntary. School administrations had to report numbers to local Communist Party branches and they did everything they could to boost that numbers. I personally had to withstand enormous pressure, humiliations and other forms of persecution through all my school years, all because I didn't want to be a part of anything ungodly. Also pioneers had to swear the oath to be faithful to Communist Party and its fight to spread communism around the world. And I absolutely didn't share their doctrine. Often mocked and beaten, I still was able to stay clean from being infected with communist ideology and to survive as a decent human being. But let's go back to Pavlik Morozov. He was the average Soviet school student without really good scores in math or reading. However, as a member of Pioneers and a leader of his local Pioneer cell, brainwashed by Communist Party's doctrine of collectivization, according to which People were forced to close their own farms and to bring all their equipment, their calves and their chickens, to a collective farm or kolkhoz, controlled by communists. Farm owners, called kulaks, including public's family members, resisted the creation of kolkhoz and conspired to sabotage wheat harvest. Public accidentally found out about the conspiracy and disclosed it to the Soviet commissars. His father, along with others, was arrested and later executed. Somehow Pavlik's betrayal was discovered and he was killed in the forest with his brother. How it all got to that point? As one of the methods of expansion of a social base of 
Stalinism and maintaining mass support of repressions was active propagation of ideas of an absolute priority of communist party and class interests above the norms of human morality, above family and friendship, large-scale propaganda actions, numerous meetings where everyone should vote for a death penalty, assemblies, their studies on which it was necessary to convince your comrades, friends, relatives to repent and swear loyalty to the Communist Party and irreconcilability to its enemies gradually loosened moral principles of a society. Cooperation with authorities in suppression of so-called people's enemies was presented as patriotic and unequivocally noble action. As an example, were raised and praised images of the heroes and maskers, similar to Pavlik Morozov. His name was first written in the Book of Honor of Soviet Pioneer Organization. In 1948, in Moscow's park, name after Pavlik Morozov was raised his monument. Well-known Russian philosopher Nikolai Berdyaev, discussing socialist religion, said that revolution by its spiritual nature is a break of father their son apostasis. You see, having new socialist religion, kids were taught to believe that faith in God is just survival of the past, that there is no God, that those who preach the gospel or the, the Torah are the enemies of the progress and are the stumbling stones on the way to the perfect Soviet society and therefore must be sacrificed, which means killed for the sake of future generations' happiness. As they sang in the famous International Communist Anthem, we will destroy all the words of oppression with its foundation, and then we will build our new world where those who was nobody will become everything. Who can imagine what those called nobody could do if they became everything? What could do those for whom biblical moral values didn't exist? Who only knew Soviet moral of the murder and destruction proletariat dictatorship and oppression. It's hard to believe, but people sincerely believed that their poor Soviet life was much better than that of American masses, oppressed by the handful of rich capitalists. They didn't care to learn that American oppressed masses lived much better and richer lives than any one of glorious Soviet masses. On the opposite, as Soviet people sang in another song about their socialistic motherland, I don't know any other country where a man could freely breathe like here. Wow. While in my homeland, the Ukraine, that has the richest soil able to provide food for whole Europe. People were dying of starvation. While in Gulag, death camps for millions of people, even the air was rationed. 
How could anyone believe that the true freedom was there? Again. Socialism that emptied people's hearts, minds, and wallets didn't give a lot of choices for them. Soviet Iron Curtain divided people in two groups, privileged and masses. Privileged were those whom non-existent God of atheism appointed to lead masses into their bright utopian future. This elite group was well fed, protected, and rewarded, because if they would suffer, who could then lead the masses? People just needed them, like sheep needs a shepherd. Second group, called masses, can be viewed in four subgroups. First, thieves. Yes, thieves. Second, poor. Third, very poor. And fourth, just not of this world. Those who are not of this world. Although most of Soviet populations were thieves, there was that special class called thieves. Majority, with the exception of relatively small group of religious people, were always looking around, ready to grab something that could be hidden in the pockets or in the bosom or wrapped around under furry coat and taken out of office, factory, plant, etc. People were proud of their ability to full security, or they simply sold stolen items and shared little of their profit with the guards. These still were hard-working people. They just robbed government that robbed them through taxes. But the thieves, as a separate group, didn't bother to work at all. For a thief to work? No, no, it was the shame. Many of them started their career as a little homeless kids, cutting pockets, grabbing purses, fur hats, polishing their very art as they grew. As teens, their target were bigger, like homes, apartments, black markets, even orthodox churches with their icons that had some value. But all of them wanted to become an elite thieves. Those were getting fat crumbs from the table of privilege. They were used by the privileged to support communist propaganda with their fists. Privileged, all of them, members of Soviet Communist Party, tried to keep their hands clean from dirty job. At least nobody should be thinking they were able to torture or kill somebody. Take, for example, Joseph Stalin and his commissars. Some of them who lost their privileges and ended in Gulag sincerely believed that Stalin didn't know anything about their fate. They thought that everything was just manipulated behind his back. And if only they could find the way to get the message to him, then good great leader would definitely defend them and order their release. How anyone could have any doubts of the angelic purity of privileged? 
when such big propaganda machine worked to create and protect their image with the networks of lies. What is the root of such a marriage between Soviet government and thieves? They both were thieves. My friends, no matter how much they deny or are trying to dismiss, it is not socialistic. That's exactly what I see is happening here in America, especially with current government and what they are doing. They are thieves, stealing from present and future generations with those trillion dollars economic stimulus bills. All these bills stimulate is their power control. You know what they are doing now with that money? Practically nothing. But they are planning further steps of advancing socialism. They will divide the whole sum in two and use first half before congressional elections and second half before the next presidential elections while employing full power of socialistic propaganda machine to fool American people that the left is good and the right is bad. The Iron Curtain construction in American minds that was moving slowly over the past century is now on the fast pace. Every time American people swallow socialistic media propaganda. They allow that iron curtain grow bigger and wider until it is completely dividing them from the truth. And larger will grow the division between brainwashed and those who are not. Next step will be to organize the army of thieves or so-called civil armed forces formed of people convinced by the propaganda into believing that taking goods from the rich using force is actually good for the cause. Can't you see that American public Morozovs are massively produced by American public education? You think I'm kidding? Go watch YouTube videos showing how kids here in American schools are organized to praise a cult of a great leader personality. Some people look and wonder how it happened that socialists in America got so far. Let me tell you, socialists religiously dedicated to their ideology, or I would call it their religious theology, without God. And they never stopped working for their cause, sometimes openly, sometimes in the underground, like weather underground while other people only resisted to their move when it became quite obvious. In other words, while socialists made 10 steps to advance, free America made only one step to resist, thus stepping back without seeing the death trap set behind. There is no way to step back anymore. If your faith in God and freedom will not grow stronger than their faith in socialistic godlessness, if you will not form the persistent resistance that will be able to move both on the surface and on the ground, then America you 
are done. Because I was there on the other side of socialism survival. I do not want to get there again. And I do not want you to get there. There are many things you can do to reverse the course, even though its cost will be very high. But there is no other choice for free America to remain free. For me and my family, as well as many other Soviet oppressed, dreaming was survival. When I was locked in a solitary cell for my opposition to Soviet regime, being beaten by guards and eaten by bed bugs, there was nothing I could do but to dream of the freedom you have and to pray for God's intervention. Here in America, you are still free to resist. Yes, again, I'm saying about persistent, organized resistance. But now you should think and calculate your moves 10 steps ahead of socialists while predicting and preventing their moves at the same time. Instead of a passive philosophic look at current situation, you need to actively prepare for any possible situations your moves and counter moves. At this point, I'd like to return to three things I mentioned in the beginning. Cleansing of your mind, developing immunity against all forms of propaganda, and damaging and destroying socialistic propaganda machine with effective counter propaganda. First, cleansing of your mind and what it has to do with the current situation. Although there are many different inner body cleansing methods, the one old but reliable method is fasting. While for the physical body you fast by abstaining from eating food, for mind cleansing we need to abstain from listening. You know, most, if not all, of the media charged with propaganda attacks on your mind. And only if you practice mind fasting, you can stay free from being brainwashed and manipulated. Only through mind cleansing, you can see clearly what you need, not what they say you need. You can see what you have to do and where to go because they say you don't have any other choice but to do what they tell you to do and to go where they tell you to go how you do such fasting simple just shut off your tv radio pc better unplug them and if possible take fuses out throw newspapers in the garbage without even looking at them do it at least for a week spend quality time with your family or your congregation. I'm sure your spouse and children will be happy. Do something helpful in your church or other congregation of your choice. Of course, the benefit of such fast will multiply. If you will combine mind cleansing with physical fasting and prayer, freedom fighters need such people with clear minds, strong will and determination. You cannot achieve it just because some good voices told you on the radio you have to be that way, but because you achieved it by exercising mind and body abstinence. Maybe speaking of abstinence sounds so un-American for some of you. But just being a couch potato, which is definitely American, makes you an 
easy prey for socialist vultures. Second is developing immunity. Propaganda wants to scare you to act now and act wrong way. That will empty your wallet and your soul and benefit only them. All advertisement works that way. It is so called impulse buying. It also can be impulse voting, impulse donating, etc. Mind fasting, living physically and spiritually healthy lifestyle will help you to survive socialist propaganda attacks. Protect your soul with the word of God, and for this is my Bible verse of the week. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. Sometimes people under influence of propaganda think that they understand everything and are ready to obey their impulses, when in fact they never before went so far from truth. Next, work hard not to spend more but to develop strong friendship with like-minded people. And here comes my third point. Counter-propaganda. You and your friends need to work out a plan of actions for this time and also for the worst times if they come. Remember, If you are not producer, you are consumer. You won't have time or desire to consume socialist propaganda if you are producer of the counter propaganda. It may be blogging, podcasting, creating websites, publishing and distributing brochures, pamphlets, CDs with the conservative anti-socialist messages, organizing events, local and national. Use their methods to counter them, as far as it won't be against your conscience. Conservative radicals can do more for their cause than Sol Alinsky ever dreamed for his cause while writing the rules for radicals. I'm not saying that you should buy that book, but rather watch what they are doing and then oppose with your content in their package, something like that. And if the situation will demand, if nothing else will work, be ready to bring your tent in front of the Congress or White House to fast and pray there, and to stand for your liberty. And now the Russian anecdote of the week. Three Russians in Gulag share stories with each other why they got there. The first of them says, I was five minutes late for my work, and they accused me of sabotage. Second, and I, on the contrary, came five minutes earlier and was accused of espionage. The third one, and I came precisely on time and was accused of undermining the Soviet economy by purchasing my watches from capitalist country. <laughs> Before I finish this podcast, I'd like to share with you a short story from my book about the brainwashing machine. Now, think about this great civilization achievement. 
In the ancient times, to wash clothes, women would take it to the water, like river or lake, soak it and smash it on the rocks. In the third world countries, they still do that. When I was a toddler, I remember my mom used washboard for the same purpose. Later, my parents got their first electric washing machine. It looked like a painted stainless steel barrel with uh, two rubber rolls on the top to squeeze water from clothes. As a little boy, I liked to watch water swirl in that barrel as my dad operated the technology wonder. It took brains to create washing machine. Then it took brain to create machine to wash brain. Let me explain how it works. They guess who? Take your brain, soak it in their propaganda, and then smash it. Welcome to the USSR. Please come back to my site, socialismsurvival.com, and leave a feedback in my forum. Or you can call and leave me a message directly from contacts page using Google Voice at the bottom of that page. For those of you who subscribed to this podcast using iTunes, if it will fail to download, please go to iTunes Store and subscribe again. As I plan to move the podcast hosting and will submit a different link to iTunes. Also, please join me on the Twitter, dig.com and Facebook. And with this, I'd like to say goodbye for another week. It was my pleasure to talk to you directly from my studio. I am your socialism survival host, Alex. I bless you. God bless America.